You're watching Face to Face. I'm your host, Tim Vince, and I'm very, very pleased to be joined by Dave Bilborough. Oh, Tim, uh, it's great to be with you. It's so nice to sort of reel you in <laughs> to the studio here, because yeah. Dave, you've, you've been knocking around for a few decades, mm. I would say, and mm. I remember certainly in the 1980s, if not the 1970s, singing some of your choruses. Yeah, it's Is it amazing. fair to call it a chorus? Well, I guess some of, the, some of the songs were definitely choruses, yeah. uh, songs that you could instantly connect with, hopefully, yeah. and, and remember and take away, and that was the strength of them. Yeah. Uh, but but yeah. they came out of your own heart, as it were, and you had a guitar, and then, yeah. and then they caught on. And they caught on, yeah. I mean... I think I was very fortunate because at the time I first became a Christian, um, it was the beginnings of a sort of new wave of what yeah. was happening through the churches. The, the Holy Spirit was moving in a powerful way. And informality w yes. was happening. You know, um, there was new translations of the Bible, the Living Bible and J.B. Phillips. and Good news for modern man. Good news for modern man. Uh, people were more relaxed about the way they did church yeah. and home group meetings were starting up. And the beginnings of new styles of worship was, was developing. People yeah. were coming out of the traditional hymn-based style with the organist and the, 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 the songs, the hymns being placed on a, a, a wooden kind of slack that's right i remember that. uh you know in the in the, in the various churches it was much they more go important. they go on ebay for quite a lot of money now those, <laughs> those, those <laughs> yes, sort of, you good. know oak you know him good yeah things. making them nice in the hallway yeah. um that, there i was as a young guitar a, a young person who just happened to play the guitar yeah but i found something very dynamic mm. in finding god as mm. as that young person coming out of a background where you know christianity wasn't part of my vocabulary, wasn't part of my experience, I'd found God, but I was very influenced by the singer-songwriters of my generation, yeah. people like Bob Dylan and Paul Simon and these exactly. kind of people. And so it was kind of natural for me to want to express out my faith, get hold of a guitar and start to play it. And, and by the way, if I could interject, because hmm. it may trigger some of our older viewers, yeah. but you know, they were had real solid theological truth to it. You know, I am a new creation, yeah. no more in condemnation, or yeah. all hail the Lamb mm. enthroned on high. Mm. They, they're absolute epics, which of course you don't take any credit for because <laughs> the Holy Spirit gave the you. Holy Spirit. And I was fortunate as well to be around yeah. some Bible teachers, some yes. preachers who really inspired me yeah. and gave me vision. In fact, when I first started, I used to travel with them and it wasn't even just hearing them speak publicly, it was being with them mm. that really got into my heart and, and soul. And they gave room to someone like me, a young guy just learning the guitar to get out there and start playing yeah. some of these songs. And that first one was a simple song which I wrote just as a simple uh, response to God called Abba Father. Yes. And, uh, you know, I, I come into a revelation of God as the mm. Father. It still way. touches me. I'm just feeling emotional thinking oh, about it because it's such yeah. a... Yeah, you're quite right. You're, it's all about relationship with the Father. Yeah. Mm. There I am up in my bedroom with my guitar, mm. coming away. I've been going through a difficult time. There were nine of us as young people going around together, four fellas and four, uh, five girls. Yeah. The five girls decided to get married to my four, four friends, male uh, friends. Wow. So I was thinking of feeling a little bit left out, you know? Yeah. But I knew I found something dynamic with, yeah. with God yeah. and played this little simple song, mm. took it along to our little home group meeting, played it and... Let me be yours and yours alone. Yeah, yeah. May, go on, just give us a few more lines. Have a father, let me be yours and yours alone. Never let my heart grow cold, never let me go. Mm. Abba Father, let me be yours and yours mm. alone. And so powerful. It was a prayer, and really, that was the foundation of so yeah. much of, of what I then yeah. have gone on to do. And, and it pretty well was before, dare I say, even the overhead projector. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're talking about 1970s. Yeah. Mm. Well, you see, the beauty of some of these songs is that they could be picked up and sung and remembered. Yeah. And then... Mm you know, uh, passed on to one another. Mm. And there was this whole network of home group meetings yeah. and meeting in hired halls and auditoriums sometimes. And in fact, there was some, occasionally there was a big event, say at the Albert Hall where everyone would gather. Yeah. 
I remember yeah, those was, yeah. Battle Royal or yeah, you know, they those, had these big events, kind of Argo Brains. Argo Brains. Brains. So there yeah. I am, this young guy, you know, suddenly yeah. at the Albert Hall playing these these, yes. these worship songs. Yeah. Um, and I'll tell you what I remember from some of those absolute, I would call them epics, is mm. that anyone, if you're in an open fellowship led by the Spirit, anyone could suddenly start singing that that's and right. everyone, it doesn't need to have a performance from the front. No, and I think that's one of the great uh, dangers that you know our modern worship can slip into the idea that it is all about performance how yeah. the lighting and looking good and the band up the front yeah. um, whereas this organic mm. stripped back exactly. worship that comes from the body you know when we come together each one has mm. and of course the brethren churches they yeah. very much fo focused exactly. on that and many yeah. of the charismatic speakers are, are, are from that background from that background yeah and we used to gather together in a circle um, you Brilliant. know, it wasn't all about the, the platform and the stage. In fact, I remember we, we met in this big East End <coughs> pub once yeah. uh, for a whole series of meetings in my hometown. We couldn't find a hall. So there was this East End pub upstairs where there we were, the Christians gathering. And I remember um, some of the meetings were quite long mm. and thinking... I but actually, some, even though they were long, they were engaging. Oh, they were engaging. Yeah. yeah. Apart from if you did need to visit the gents' toilets yes. downstairs. Yeah. And there was this um, big staircase that you had to go down. And I remember going down halfway through the meeting and the landlord had his phone up in the air. This is the, yeah. uh, you know, the, uh, and he, I thought, what's, what's happening? Is he, is he sort of got converted or something? And he's putting, after a while, he put his, uh, the phone to his ear and he said, he said, that's those Christians up there. He said, <laughs> they're having a whale of a time, much better than we are. Yeah, And brilliant. I think, well, that's, Fantastic, no, absolutely that's how our worship brilliant. Be. And, and the other thing about, about the, the songs, even in those early years, they, they caught on because they weren't culturally based really, where they weren't sort of, you didn't all have to turn up at church with a suit and tie to sing them. It was that informality, mm. yeah. Amazing. And then I remember the day drums came into the church and things yeah. started to, yeah. to happen, you know. It was, it was uh, a revolution, a revolution really. Time. Yeah. Um, but, you know, our friends in New Zealand, they wrote uh, songs, Scripture in Song. That's right. I remember those. The, the, they were basically Dave and Dale Garrett. Bible. Dave and Dale yeah, Garrett. I, remember I was those. speaking to him just a uh, really? few months ago. Oh, epic. And um, they took the, the scriptures from the Bible and they put them into people's mouths yeah. to sing and to declare. I think there's something very powerful in that, you know, that we remember these songs, we, we sing them as we're walking around. Mm. And uh, I've gone on to write lots of lengthy songs, of course, yeah. and, uh, uh, you know, more complex. Yeah. But sometimes it's coming back to that strip back, yeah. you know. So let's, before we go, I, I'd like to play at least a couple of your, of, of your mm. more recent um, compositions. But mm. before we go into that, uh, What's changed? Because I, I've, the kind of informality that you, you, you've mentioned, which I remember as a kid mm. at Halford House years ago, mm. um, it seems to be very much more structured and we've wheeled all the way back to singing hymns, yeah, which yeah. aren't hymns, as it were. Well, technology can be a very powerful thing or a very wonderful thing. Yeah. I'm not anti-technology, but sometimes you know we can be limited by the screen and uh, what you getting the order right and you sing the final chorus twice at the end and it is it's, the same every service that's right that's right whereas i love to follow the flow of the holy spirit yeah, yeah. link things together link songs together unexpected yeah. ones yeah. You know, when it was the uh, the days of the overhead projector, and you remember yes. those? Yeah, I do, I do, I do. I've got, sometimes you'd have the writing uh, in different colours, green and red and orange and uh, sometimes... And at least you used to know who had written the songs, because I'm sure there are plenty of churches that will play your songs and no one will know who wrote them. Well, that's true. I see, I see it. I just look, well, who wrote that song? <laughs> well, I'll tell you, um, with, with some of these songbooks where they came out, you know, uh, Songs of Fellowship was a songbook. Um, Abba Father would always be at the top and then there would be yeah. another song called An Army of Ordinary People and then it yes. was All Hail the Lamb. They all yes. start with A, so it yes. gave the impression that I'd written the whole song, yeah. which is great. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I think um, sometimes uh, we can get uh, too stereotyped in the way That's that right. we do worship and there's yeah. the freedom of the Holy Spirit that we yeah. need to breathe back into our time. And also, if I dare say this, might upset some people, it is you know, practiced singing in the spirit at the end of the song. It just seems as yeah. though it's a bit contrived. Yeah, this is what we do now. Yeah. I mean, I remember the first time I ever heard singing in, in, in the spirit, singing in tongues. It, it yeah. sent a shiver down my spine. That's right. 
this, the, the idea of a congregation of people just joining together yeah. and making just a, a great symphony mm. of sound, mm. all the people, and not the celebrity up the sta on the stage making, uh, making things happen, but yeah. all the organic feel. And, you know, with this uh, new collection of songs that I've written, mm. um, okay, they're a little bit more complex, but uh, I recorded them uh, for a video series in a barn, and it was great because we wow. gathered together in a barn, and uh, th there's one, I, you know, it'd be great to, to share with Let's you, which if we... Uh, can. Just, just name it and we'll, and well, we'll the play table it. Table of the Lord. Um, Ta table of the Lord. And what we'll do is we will... Um, we might backtrack and it may be a bit disjointed, but I'd love to be able to, mm. as, we're with, uh, as we're with you here live, let's go for it. So let's listen to the table of the Lord. At the table of the Lord There's room for every homeless child There's room for every homeless child There's room for every homeless child At the table of the Lord still here with Dave Vilbra and I want to talk about that um, that song mm. what inspired it and what what's your objective yeah well it's an acoustic song just me and, and guitar perhaps going back to my roots um, uh, without a band or on, on this one but the the, the 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 sort of thrust of it is that basically um, God's heart is towards all people mm. and he wants to include all people into his, his gospel message um, yeah. true we've got to respond yeah but the heart is there, the, you know, the, the, the offer of the table is there and God, God is this great God of compassion and, and grace reaches out to all sorts of people. Yes, the people in the top of society, but those, those who are struggling and those who are finding it hard. The this is where technology oh. kicks in because you, you put it out on Spotify because yeah. I've seen some of your songs out there. Yeah, and this, this is really a, a, little, a video series. And okay. With this collection of songs, I've done a sort of narration as well, spoken narration, so yeah. people can get the, the thrust of it. Yeah. But the idea is that, you know, whilst I fully embrace that heart of worship, 
I think that part of worship is reaching out to people outside of the church. You know, the priests, when they came to minister, they also ministered to, the, they ministered to God, but they ministered to the people yes. as well. And so we need to be reaching out to offer the hands of compassion to be that uh, of who, who Jesus is. And uh, one of the things that I... I tell you what occurs to me there is Psalm 23, thou spreads the table before me. Exactly. It says in the presence of mine enemies, but then it says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. And, yeah. and that's, yeah. Yeah, that's for everyone to see the table of the Lord. Everyone to see. Mm. And, um, you know, I think sometimes we limit our musical styles and presentation to be just towards the Christian yeah. rather than opening it out to yeah. offer it to, to others. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I've been doing um, is a thing uh, in a little theatre, uh, mixing up some of my uh, songs with some mainstream songs wow. song, uh, of, of songwriters that I respect. Um, and weaving that in with stories to talk about my spiritual journey. Now wow. it's geared, yes, a and lot when of you say theatre, that you're yeah, a little theatre. Pre you've pre you're presenting yeah. it on a, a, a yeah. There was a and just tell us again. It's on you. Uh, you've got. Uh, does your website cover everything we're talking about? Yeah, now, it covers right? everything we're talking about. So just about. just say it, and it will come yeah. up on the screen anyway. So German Street. Uh, oh my my website. website. www.daybilber.com. All the w is daybilber.com. Perfect. Easy. Perfect. Yeah, so talk about it. Yeah, um, and, and so uh, I was really feeling like, yes, if I can touch Christians in worship, I must be able to bring a sense of the presence of Christ to a people outside. Mm. And uh, so I found this little theatre in London, in Piccadilly, wow. that was just perfect. Uh, I was, in fact, I was praying, God opened the doors for me for this new journey, Amazing. this new adventure. And the doors opened and a chap was, was there. He said, can I help you? I said, well, I'd really like to look at your theatre. And I went downstairs to this little theatre and it had beautiful uh, cinema type seats. Amazing. and um, uh, Just a perfect forum. And so for a number of uh, evenings, you know, uh, I, I put on this. So you've upgraded session. from the pub now. You're now yeah, at the theatre <laughs> in Piccadilly. <laughs> well, now I've moved on to taking it around yeah. in different. Oh, in, wow. In different, OK. Uh, songs and stories. Yeah. And, and, and the basic thrust of it is that I want to show something of my spiritual journey. Mm. I want to share that spirit of worship, but in a way that's accessible also to someone on the fringes of church. Excellent. And, you know, if we believe in the power of the Holy Spirit and the presence of the Holy Spirit, yeah. then we should believe that God can touch and move people's hearts as, as we're singing. Yeah. So I mix it up with some fun and humour, but also hopefully um, people get what Dave's about through yeah. an evening like that, you know, and I've been influenced by lots of songs down through the years and I yeah. share those with my stories. Amazing. And uh, how do you manage the copyrights that sort of thing? Do you, yeah. Because it's Quite. like performing rights and yes, all that sort yeah, of well, stuff. That's all, keep that all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, we have to keep the tab yeah. with, with that. And, uh, yeah. That's all good. But, but basically, you, uh, while we're on the subject, you, you've, uh, you've seen like the, the whole industry with um, uh, you know, Christian performing rights and all that sort of mm. stuff. What's your view on that? Well, that's know? emerged and um, you know, I've benefited from it because yeah. it's helped me along the way into my calling, into my, yeah. to my ministry. Yeah. But obviously one wants to steer away from writing songs just for yeah, exactly. the gain and the popularity. Exactly. Isn't that how it started? I, mean, I remember I, I played a song to a, a well-known speaker once called um, Arthur, Arthur Wallace. Uh, oh, I remember Arthur Wallace. I played him Abba Father, and mm. then I played him this song called The Gospel Rock and Roll, yeah. uh, which didn't quite have the same anointing. And uh, I remember him, him, him saying to me, stick to the ballads, Dave. I'm not sure I've always <laughs> stuck to the ballads, but I did realise then at an early stage, it's not about writing for charts, it's about writing for hearts. Brilliant. And writing from our heart or our aspiration. Right, so introduce the next, we're going to squeeze two songs in here. Mm. So what's the next song? Well, this song is really a song, which is a song which uh, responds from the heart. It's a song which is called To The One. Mm. And I guess it's a song which really is a song that leads us to a place of consecration because worship isn't just about singing the songs. Yeah. Worship is about a lifestyle. Jesus never asked us to worship him, mm. but he asked us to follow him. Yeah. And uh, this song, To The One, Excellent. I hope, says something of that. Excellent. So, let's play To The One. All my weakness and my 
frailty, greed for power and personal gain. My ambitions I surrender to the one who freely gave. Jesus stands the risen Savior. I will follow where he leads, willingly, without coercion. I'm placing all my trust in Christ my Lord. was the wonderful song To The One, written by a certain Dave Bilborough, who's seated <laughs> with me here. And uh, Dave, just uh, tell me where, where, how the Lord's leading you now, and where's your heart, as it were? Yeah, well, I think, you know, having had a panoramic view of worship, one, one of the things I, I realise is that it can't be put in a bottle. You know, worship is a variety of styles and transcends all, all cultures. And, you know, that's the great thing about songs. They go to different cultures of the world, and I've had the privilege of seeing different styles of worship from the Africans with their drums and yeah. you know going for it uh, to up in northern Scotland where they sing the Psalms just plaintive. There isn't one style, it starts from the heart yeah. and I guess my role now is to uh, perhaps be that sort of modern day psalmist that from the heart I write those expressions of, of worship with different styles uh, and try and make them relevant to as many people as possible. Yeah. Part of that journey involves encouraging the younger That's right. generation That's because it. you know there's a whole different sound springing up and yeah. they've Amazing. got diff their own t different styles and uh, and they've all got these gizmos as well so yeah. that, that it's you know the way people listen to songs. The way, yeah, I mean CDs different. are no more. It's all about on yeah. the internet yeah. and um, connecting with that. 
And you know, these different songwriters will have different ways of putting things and doing things. Mm. But you know, if I've got some role, it will be to help and encourage them in, in what they're doing, to be who they are, to follow the leading of God's Spirit, not just what the marketplace mm. tells them, to swim in that lane, keep going, and look after their family. And yeah. I mean, what I, when you said uh, that you're, you are like a psalmist, a modern day psalmist, and when you talk about the next generation, it reminds me of the sons of Korah, because yeah. they were kind of songwriters yeah, yeah. in the temple. Yeah. But it wasn't just one generation, because you can read in the Psalms, oh, that's from that period, and that's yes, from another. So it right. can go on. It, it doesn't have to on. end with the 1970s no, charismatic no. movement. No, well, there's that beautiful bit in the Psalms, isn't there? One generation shall tell another. Oh, it's brilliant. We sing out these songs, and the next generation will reinterpret them in a different way, those truths, which yeah. is great. And then it goes on to the next. Uh, you know, I want to be part of that journey. And, and are you, you're still travelling quite widely, are you? Mm, yeah. Mm, yeah. So that's great. Yeah, and, the, yeah. uh, and you travel with your guitar, basically. Sharing my songs with my guitar. Nowadays, a lot of it is, is um, you know, uh, with, with just with guitar or acoustic or, you know, with another accompanist. Um, but yeah, all, all good. Now, it's the last minute, but I'm going to risk this. Yeah. Um, there's a young aspiring millennial with a guitar or a piano. How would you tell them how to start? Ah, uh, well, if they <laughs> were wanting to minute. write songs, I would say just start by fixing your heart and attention on God and letting your heart flow during worship. And out of that worship on your private times will come the seeds of an idea as you use them to uh, develop on your instrument. And out of those seeds, the more you do it, the better you get. Yeah, you know? amazing. Yeah. I mean, it's a great tradition, starting with mm. David and his ten-string yeah. lyre. That's right. Mm. That's right. Yeah. Do you have a twelve-string? Was it? I've a got six all string? that. No, I've yeah. got a twelve-string. I've got. I've got a whole collection of uh, yeah. guitars, but there's the one that is my number one, my Guild guitar, which I got in 1970, 70, 78. Yeah. But, uh, so I hope, folks, we're out of time. It's fantastic to have you, and I hope you'll tune in to Dave's website and look forward to seeing you next time we go face to face.